realize when talking to a computer is that computers are stupid. They do not understand sentence structure. Shoot, they don't really even understand words. Number two thing to think about is that with almost every search engine, the word and is assumed. Let's imagine you're a student trying to figure out why student athletes would do something as dangerous as use steroids. You go to a search box and you type, why would student athletes use steroids? The computer is not going to see that and think, why would student athletes use steroids? No, the computer sees what you typed and thinks, why and would and student and athletes and use and steroids. Then it goes out and tries to find things that have all those words in any order somewhere in the record of an item and bring you back results. Now, if the searching program is running a sophisticated algorithm, you may find what you need no problem, but sometimes you get a whole bunch of irrelevant junk. This brings me to my next point. Quotation marks keep terms together. Basically, whenever you put search terms inside of quotation marks, you're telling the computer, don't you dare stick an and between those words. I want them to appear in this order and right next to each other. Let's imagine that you're a student doing a research paper on how the classroom environment contributes to learning. Now, rem now you remember point number one, computers are stupid. You simply type classroom environment learning in the search box. You may end up with articles speaking about how students learn about the environment in their classroom, not the topic you're looking for. So you search again, and this time you put classroom environment in quotes. This gives you results that talk about how the desk and the walls and the bulletin boards and the computer stations contribute to student learning. Now when you're picking what terms to use, particularly in a catalog or a database, you need to know something. Real live human beings create database and catalog records. Right now, sitting in cubicles are teams of people with stacks of books and journals next to them who are typing into a computer things like title and author and subject terms. These real live human beings all went to college. Plus, they're indexing scholarly stuff, so guess what they're going to use? That's right, a college level vocabulary. This coupled with your understanding that computers are stupid means that when you put search terms in a box, it helps to talk to a computer like you're a caveman with a high vocabulary. Let's put it all together. Let's say your research question is, why don't college students get enough sleep? You may say to the search engine, college students, sleep. If your research question is, what do I need to know about talking to older patients? You may type in the search box, communication and elderly patients. One final point as you head out to find stuff. There's a difference between locating a text and actually getting your hands on it. Think about shopping online. You find a cute pair of shoes, you put the shoes in your shopping cart, and you check out. Then your computer cracks open, and you pull out the shoes, and you put them on, and you're ready to go. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. The fact is, finding research materials online is a lot like finding shoes online, only in this case, you pay money to the school, the school gives some of the money to the library, the library uses that money to purchase a access to a wealth of resources. What's better than shopping for most things online is that a huge percentage of the time you're going to find something you want, click on its title, and it like magic. It'll be right there. Then there are times where you're actually going to end up using a link resolver page where you may have to click on the title and then the volume, then scroll through to the table of contents until you find the article and then click on it to get it. Sometimes you may actually have to come to the library, pull it off the shelf, check it out, read it, or make a scan or photocopy, or perhaps the library will have to order for you via interlibrary loan. There's also a tiny percentage of time when you can't figure out how to get your hands on it, and you may have to <gasps> speak to a librarian. Now I get it. You're busy. You have a lot going on. When you find a group of articles, if they don't come up right away, you're just going to ignore them and find something you can get immediate access to. That's okay. But should you find you actually need to get your hands on one of those more difficult to get ones, remember, the library uses some of that money you paid to the school to hire librarians who would be more than happy to help you find what you're looking for. No, really, they went off and got a master's degree in library science and everything. <laughs>